Welcome back, everyone. Uh, <laughs> we've got Ifro on the line here since uh, Randy's internet's still not cooperating. And since uh, we we're on a little bit behind schedule, we're actually going to skip the winner interview with Jerry. I'm sure we can get him after he wins every other round and uh, go straight into the Cuneo versus Raptor match where we've got some nice brews here. So we're going to head down to there. Okay. So, all right. Well, well, let's take a look at their deck list first, actually. So Josh <laughs> is a. Uh, He's playing the deck that uh, he wanted to build during Pro Tour testing. So this isn't completely out of nowhere, since he did build yep. this deck while we tested. But it's also not a deck we've seen really before. Yeah, this thing is a... Uh, this is something. <laughs> so in case you, you, you're not sure what's going on here, the the main combo is a Kona First Rider, the 5-1 Hexproof, with Becomments, giving it plus 6, plus 6, and Teamer Battle Rage. So, you know, dealing a nice little 22 points of trample damage here. And then... Uh, the, the rest of the deck is kind of built around that. You have Teamer Charger as another way to give Trample, then Boon Seder and Death Mist Raptor as more creatures to attack with, then Den Protector and Seder Wayfinder and Commune with the Gods to set it up. So it's a pretty single-minded deck. This is actually almost as single-minded as Jerry's deck, and it's red-green also. It's just all it is is ways to enable this one thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it does have a bit of a late game kind of staying plan, having, you know, a bunch of ways to get cards in the graveyard and Dead Protector to bring them back and, and Raptors to come back when you flip the Dead Protector. So some nice synergies there. Um, Become Immense and Teamer Battle Raids, of course, really strong. You don't really need to have a Conifer Strider, I think, that often in the standard metagame because people are forced to just tap out. It, it It's pretty likely that you'll be able to get this off on, on one of your other creatures, especially when they don't know it's coming. And when they do know it's coming, if people are just forced to leave up their hero's downfalls or, you know, God forbid, their utter ends or cards that cost even more than hero's downfall every turn because you can combo kill them. Well, you're accomplishing something pretty great anyway, and your yeah. more creatures in that synergy can probably take it down. Yeah, and kind of going off with Deathmiss Raptor, Den Protector is also pretty nice. It just means that with communes and wayfinders, you could dump two raptors in your graveyard, play Den Protector, and that's almost enough to beat some decks by itself. <laughs> Not too many decks are just going to get beat by it. By Death Mist Raptor. Raptors are known to be a little bit feeble, but they're still. <laughs> uh, and then the sideboard is not doesn't really change up what the deck's doing. Just presents Ravel Master, Ashclad Phoenix, and uh, Reveler as threats, just as ways to threaten a control deck that maybe has the wrong kinds of removal in. Yeah. So we can take, take a look at the other one. Let's take a look at what Cuneo's got here, and. He's got <laughs> green-black shenanigans, which is really kind of like green-black constellation, since it's got Eidolon of Blossoms, it's got a you know Farika God of uh, Affliction and Strength of the Fallen, plus a bunch of different enchantments. So and Nick Weaver to kind of fill his graveyard and be an enchantment. So it's a it's a kind of a deck we saw more during block season, but it's been updated with you know new cards like Den Protector, for example, and the CDC Undead Vizier. So it 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 looks like. He's actually missing Doomwake Giants. He's got him in the sideboard, but Doomwake is one of the cards I would want against a deck playing 5-1 Hexproofs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is a good a good follow-up to a, a kind of a spreader. Um, listen under Creatures, it says Dictate of Erebos, which I'm not sure if that's a typo or it's put in the wrong place, but it is not a card I've ever seen played, ever. Yeah, standard. I mean, it's obviously a playable card in Limited, but I've never seen it in play, so... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's an interesting one. Um, definitely... Assuming it's correct, is definitely plays to, to some synergies with uh, with Sidisi and being able to sacrifice your creatures, but that's definitely a rare one. I guess we ha are seeing more of cards like Merciless Executioner being played in people's main decks, and uh, maybe just trying to capitalize on that. <laughs> so, of note, both decks playing lots of Seder Wayfinders <laughs> with uh, slightly different aims, but they're both using the graveyard as a resource, which is kind of funny. Raptor has an incredibly medium hand here. It's just four land and three three drops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that hand is, is a little shy of medium. Yeah. Oh, he does have a scry land, so hand's kind of perfect, but... Yeah, there we go. He's probably just going to, like, draw a team or battle rage to, <laughs> you know, top it off there. Whereas Kineo gets to go... Turn one Elvish Mystic, turn two Seder Wayfinder, plus Skyland, setting up a nice Night Howler or Den Protector, which seems pretty good. Though it looks like Cuneo does not want Death Mist Raptors or more extra Den Protectors in his deck. He's got too many enchantment synergies going on to fit those cards. 
Yeah, I mean, Deathmiss Raptor is kind of a nice card to get your, your card advantage in the late game, but if you have things like Whip of Erebos and Strength of the Fallen and Nyx Weaver and stuff, you don't really need to go off with that. <laughs> Although it certainly has good synergy with those cards as well. Well, Raptor kind of did it. He drew a 2-drop, a 2-mana 3-1 that can run into Seder Wave Thunder. <laughs> wow, I don't know Boston is a pretty sweet draw. Yeah, Raptor, that's actually perfect. Can't even kill it. <laughs> Raptor doesn't... I mean, this is the second red-green deck we've seen with zero ways to interact with an opponent's card. <laughs> well, Dragon Lord of Tarka is a pretty great way to interact with cards, but... True, um, true. <laughs> I guess he has become immense, so he has combat tricks on lock. Oh, there we are. Become immense Teamer Charger plus Death Miss Raptor? You can hit him for nine Death Touch Trample. You sure that's, can. That's, you know, lots and lots of damage. Oh, there's there Dictative Arrow <laughs> Kineo's deck is doing exactly what it was designed to do, I assume. <laughs> which is to play... A strategy in mind? Which, which is play a bunch of cantrips and not really do much. <laughs> Yet win easily. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he doesn't actually have removal spells, so to speak, so he can just get kind of comboed out. Yeah, Raptor drew, drew the... Running combo. He drew the Berserk to, to go with the Bloodlust, so... Although so. he actually is not even close to being close to being close to being able to cast the, the Bloodlust. <laughs> no. No, he's not. But he gets to cast the Teamer Charger face down. He gets to set it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plus Teamer Charger Death Miss Raptor, that's just an additional combo. It's a free way to unmorph. It's true... So Kineo's got Sidisi here. He can Sidisi up something. He can play. He can just pass with Dictate up and then uh, use Dictate to trade some Wayfinders for some creatures. That, that actually could be pretty good. I think that's the best play, especially because he gets to draw a card off the head on. Yeah, and then also look, next turn playing Sidisi with Dictate plays even better. Although Dictate not super exciting when your opponent's board is Raptor Morph. True. You can, like, let one Dictate resolve, sack the Raptor, unmorph, sack the Raptor again if you really want to. Kineo offering the trade for both of Raptor's creatures, Raptor not knowing that. Yeah, I, I assume he wants to snap this off. I mean, a card in the graveyard is nice, and Teamer Charger kind of stinks. You're not... what, if, what if Raptor's playing around Dictate of Erebus? <laughs> He's a genius. <laughs> Raptor just needs to draw Seder Wayfinder, then all his problems go away here. Yeah, outside of like being able to like win the game or compete, really, at all. Well, yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> he has drawn a lot of perfects after keeping garbage, <laughs> more or less. Now that Raptor has Seder Wayfinder, does he just win on the spot here? Pretty much. I assume. Well, well what's... He still can't really cast anything, but... Well, let's see, he bins four, five. Actually, he can Seder yeah. Wayfinder, not select anything, attack with both, then potentially just win the game. No, he, he can select... Oh, uh, no, he can't select anything, yeah. Though, huh. maybe he wanted to, like, not play his land in case he hit a like, fetch land or something. Oh, it's Raptor's not... To draw in, and with that strategy of removing your graveyard and investing three cards into a combo when your opponent has five cards in hand and black black up. But... Yeah, that is true. I'm not saying he should have, but we wanted him to go, go for it. Yeah. It would have... This this is going to work out pretty well for Acunia, I would imagine. Though I suppose Raptor can just refresh with play Wayfinder, pass, end of turn, Boonsader, untap, attack for 20. <laughs> Yeah, Raptor's deck is completely busted in every way. Probably just can't be beaten. Oh, it's actually pointed out the chat pointed out. He won't have Ferocious Keys. He has to cast the Battle Rage first to get Ooh. enough cards in the graveyard. Yeah, that's completely so. true. Yeah, that makes sense. So this is kind of seems like a chump chump here. Play Dictate, yeah. I didn't even think of the combo deck uh, not being able to activate its combo even when it can barely activate its combo. <laughs> right. But Raptor is going to get a little bit of value here. He can let damage resolve, then flip up Team Recharger. Oh, no, that doesn't even work. Yeah, the Team Recharger will also... Because that'll also just die. Oh, well. <laughs> well, what Raptor can do, 
he can let dictate resolve, let the first trigger resolve, sack raptor, then boon sater to the team recharger, flip the team recharger. Actually, he can just boon sater to team recharger. No, he wants to flip it later, probably to get raptor back, and then and then get raptor back, and then uh, and then sack the raptor or sack the team recharger. So, you said a lot of words, and I assume some of them were true, but there'd be no way of knowing. Basically, Raptor, if he wants to use Boonsater to save Team Recharger, can let a Dictate Trigger resolve, sack the the Death Mist Raptor, then flip up Team Recharger, and then get back Raptor off the Unmorphing Trigger, and then sack a different creature. So, if Raptor wants to do that, he gets a little bit of extra value. He's, of course, probably reading the card that's on the stack. <laughs> Also, if he really wants to, he can just use Boon Sater to get extra damage through, but that, that seems less advisable. All right. Let's see what Rap Dog does. I imagine you wanted to play Sater Wayfinder pre combat there, but I guess it's tough with uh, not knowing what your opponent has exactly. <laughs> Yeah, one of the sweet things about matchups like this is that nobody has any idea what cards are in either player's deck. So one person's got Dictate of, of Erebos, and the other <laughs> one's got Become Immense Team or Battle Rage without anything that he's shown, you know, ways to get cards in the graveyard or have Ferocious. So, uh, yeah. So it looks like Raptor's just casting the Boon Seder to Sacrifice, I guess? Interesting. That's another option. Then you just play Seder Wayfinder. Yeah, kind of got punished by not playing Put, Seder Wayfinder in main phase one, but whatever. Yeah. Raptor's also at 12 because he has three mana confluences in play. <laughs> well, at least he found a Woodard Foothills. The, the downside here is Cuneo is, is the kind of person who, once he sees Team or Battle Rage, he knows what the rest of the deck is doing. <laughs> and the answer to that is little to nothing. Well, yes, but he knows what the plan is at least. Yeah. Cuneo is the type of person to understand what a plan of shenanigans is all about. Yeah. It does seem odd that one deck says green-black shenanigans and the other one doesn't say green-red shenanigans, but... Immense Rage does describe it well, but shenanigans would describe it even better, I suppose. It would be more accurate. Cuneo has so many options. They're all, like, pretty decent. Yeah. CDC sack, make you sack a creature. You could play... Does he have murder with... in his deck? Seems kind of great if he can get Murderous Cut. Um, let's take a look here. Seems like a likely card to have in your deck when you have CDC and Graveyard stuff. but Yeah, it seems like that would be tough tough to imagine that he does not have Murderous Cut. Mm -hmm. And it does not look like he does. <laughs> so, there we go. <laughs> mm. He does have a second Dictator Barabos, if that answers your question. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, being able to go get Murderous Cut here would be pretty great, especially with, like, Den Protector to, to kind of just put this thing away quickly. Not having access to that, hmm. He also has, uh, if he wants to tutor for it, a commune with the gods. Cool. <laughs> of all the things that... Kino could have done face up den protector was not what I would have guessed. Oh, is he going to bestow the night hell or not? Make it just gigantic. Interesting. Wow. And then set up next turn a huge whip. Yeah. All right. I can buy that. Kino had a lot of great options. They weren't bad options. Hmm. How big is that den protector? I can't even come close to seeing how. Small. Oh no, ne neither can I. <laughs> I assume it's like a 9, a 10 9 or something like that. 12 11. Does Raptor just win now? No, he has to get through a 12 11. But he's got two attackers, three attackers. Oh, yeah, so then yes. Sorry. Like, well, block, block. So uh, Raptor gets to do 18. Yeah, he gets to put Q at a 1 here, is that accurate? Oh, no, he's, he has Trample on the Raptor. So, yeah, Raptor actually just wins now, right? <laughs> if Kunio blocks the Teamer Charger with the Eidolon, mm -hmm. 
And the raptor with the 1211? Yeah, but the raptor has death touch and trample. So. Oh, has death touch and trample. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, that's realistic. Tom, Raptor didn't miss lethal last turn. He could have technically gone for it, but it was against an opponent with black, black, green, green, green up, which is kind of insane to do, I think, not knowing deck lists. Like, especially since it looked like he could have just do it the next turn anyway. I mean, I think he should have played Wayfinder before combat, and then, but then he still wouldn't have been able to because he has to cast Battle Rage before he casts Pick Elements. Well, Raptor's deck is broken. It would appear so. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take 18. <laughs> Raptor del delivers a killing bro blow with a death mist Raptor, of course. <laughs> Probably <a> girl. <laughs> At some point, I'll have words again. Yeah. And then I assume post sideboard, Cuneo gets to side in like dead drops and or maybe thought seizes to try to go ahead and, and stop it. But uh, <laughs> what, what 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 can Raptor do? Raptor's just probably not going to sideboard here. I mean, Cuneo does have Doomwake Giant, but he didn't see the Strider, so I could see not, not bringing in Doomway, because it didn't look that great against the rest of it, but, I mean, yeah, that was awesome. Wayfinder, and he saw Teamer Charger. And... Yeah, that's true. It's also just a 4-fix that, that soaked up a lot of trample damage. Like, Kunio, if he just had access to one copy of Murderer's Cut in his deck, I don't think he could have ever lost that game. So, definitely interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised. Murder's Cut seems like a good card in this deck even without being tutored for, just like playing two or three. Yeah, it really does. Although I guess it is kind of a numbo with a uh, night night howler and strength. Yeah, if you're trying to use your uh, your raptors or your rather your all your graveyard stuff for other uh, you know other co other combos, then I could see not wanting it. Raptor, of course, has no room for anything. This is this deck is, you know, incredibly tuned and lean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's as lean as a Raptor himself. Yeah, much like the Raptor himself. Well, this is a pretty great draw. Five land and protector. <laughs> so, so Raptor's staying with me right now. He's actually in another room playing on his laptop, and he sh he shows up. And I'm like, oh, what deck are you going to play or submit tonight? He's like, uh, looks like, uh, and, and I was like, what deck are you going to submit tonight? And Josh is like, for what? <laughs> he just like forgot about the Super League. And then while we were streaming yesterday, he's just making bad deck after bad deck. And then he settled on this also bad deck. But, well, this deck has never lost a game in the history of its. its that, so. that is true. Maybe you're just a bit jealous. So it looks like Josh mulliganed a seven-card hand that had Den Protector and at least five lands into, <laughs> eh, I guess, a reasonable six-card hand for what this deck is doing. <laughs> oh, his, his hand is horribly unplayable, but probably perfect. Yeah. The actual deck. I mean, he is basically just a comment away from, from can't ever lose. Yeah, and drawing Elvish Mystic there means that he gets to you know, play a turn three Strider, making great strides, <laughs> and... Uh, all he has to do is find a becomingments and a now a battle rage, but still. Yeah, I guess he doesn't have a single removal spell in his deck, so oh, no, brain mass. I guess it's just a hard a hard thought to use on wheels. Yeah. And disgusting squishy wheels. <laughs> You're after with with all sorts of, of varying basic forests. Try to keep his opponents off guard. Well, Raptor kind of did it there. He actually was able to bend to, you know, of his namesake and then if he can commune into a Den Protector, he's just going off. Actually, Brain Maggot's even better because it, you can't Den Protector back the Battle Rage. <laughs> yeah. It's the far superior thought it is. I would say that Kinyo broke it, but it may be Raptor Anti broke it. <laughs> the only way to beat shenanigans is with more shenanigans. Yeah. One of the things Raptor really did right is pick which basic lands he would use. Just mismatched all half white border. <laughs> How long did he spend thinking about it? Was it most of the night or all of the night? 
All I know is we got back tonight and he was like, do you have cards for this deck? I was like, I have not very many of them. And then he's like, well, I don't have any other cards. <laughs> Including the basics, apparently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Down and, on, on the ground. The and then he, then he asked me how you trade on Magic Online. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is about 5.45 or so. <laughs> All right, can we get a Den Protector, I guess, is the real question here. Another Raptor would be okay, too. Or a Kineo's... Charger. Yeah, that's that's also awesome, but none of the above. Kineo does get to go uh, idle out of Blossoms into, like, a Sidisi if he draws a Black Source. That's not bad. Yeah. Oh, he's even got a Corsair, too? Yeah, that's pretty good. He does have Strength of the Fallen, which has kind of like become a Mensen Team or Battle Rage rolled into one. Yeah. Oh. Strider yeah. Flooded. Yeah, Josh is massively Strider Flooded. You think the Doomwake Giants are going to come in if there's a game three? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think there's a chance. I think Strength of the Fallen may not be the card you want. <laughs> it's not like you're out racing this. It's not the card you want, but it's the card you need. It's definitely the card Cunio deserves. <laughs> Yeah. Brew on brew. Look, jo Josh's Seems deck did... Corsair here. Yeah, it looks like he's running Corsair into potentially Strength of the Fallen. How many enchantments or creatures in his graveyard, rather? He's got, yeah. like... Looks like a couple. Kino also doing a pretty good job on the basics. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Strider really is the siege rhino of red green, as the as the chat points out. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> so Edelon draws a card. Serious medium work. And then becomes like a five five. But you know, the Stride Father's ready to take it down. <laughs> yeah. As the Stride Father normally is. <laughs> All right, looks like... Oh, it's a 3-3, three, three, so it's not even that big. So if Josh can find a morph here, then maybe he's in okay shape. I guess he can attack with now a 9... Strider. Yeah, 9-3 Strider. Oh, wait. Uh, Kunio knows about the Boon Seder right off the commune. Yeah, he does. So he could double block here, but then you just pass and trade for both Kunio's creatures. Or you're just fine with Corsair dying because you're going off... Yeah, I guess you're going off. You're gonna you. He's one creature in his graveyard right now, I guess. <laughs> so now he has two. <laughs> so it's, I wouldn't say it's strength of the fallen. It's like medium weakness of the fallen right now. And <laughs> oh, it's strength. So he draws his land or wastes. <laughs> this is just yeah. It's gonna go. What's in his graveyard? Does he have anything to nix weave? Uh, like in his so, whole deck, is there anything worth ever bringing back? I would assume like you could get back uh, maybe like another Strength of the Fallen or something that got melted. <laughs> if you really want to go off. Right, I kind of assume he's going to play the next Weaver here. Yeah, you could play Sidisi because Sidisi does block his Death Touch. So. Then you have to sacrifice your Eidolon, which I don't love. You can't sacrifice the Brain Maggot. Yeah, you could just sacrifice Death Egg. Just play Sidisi and then set up a Night, night Howler Nyx Weaver turn. Okay. Well, that's clearly what he's doing if the Eidolon's attacking without casting without it. Without getting strength, yeah. What if Kimio just sacks the, the Maggot and then just gets comboed out? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know he had any card in his deck better than Eidolon, but now we get to see what it is. Silence the Believers would be nice. He didn't have that, did he? Oh, wait, yeah. no, it's X-Proof. Yeah. It's not just a vanilla 5-1 for 4. Yeah, that, would yeah. only be, that would only be slightly worse than Rapper's average card, but still. <laughs> I forgot how broken Conifer Strider was. Yeah. What is Kino getting here? Maybe he can get like a... Well, a whip doesn't even seem that great. No. <laughs> Ultimate price. <laughs> well, that seems just way worse than Eidolon to me. Yeah. 
Ooh, Josh can now find his... What if he finds Team Recharger this turn? Then he's actually, like, kind of pressuring Kimio, like, a lot. He gets to Team Recharger to do a couple points of damage on his attack, ends up with Boon Seder, Elvish Mystic, two Death Mist Raptors, and a Team Recharger in play. I guess. <laughs> well... Oh, right, all the Death Mist Raptors? Yeah, that would actually be insane. Yeah. Looks like Paul's one one going into game three. This is this is actually like far harder to commentate on than, than vintage is because I have not drafted the set nearly enough to play <laughs> so many cards that were this bad. Yeah. I need to draft more dragons and have more tr conifer strider. Which, meanwhile, even though vintage draws from the entire history of magic, the the card pool of cards we see play are not like absurd, and we do a pretty good job of keeping up on the vintage decks, but. Yeah. Yeah, when, when, you, you, know, you can't when, ever keep up with the minds of Andrew Cunio and Josh Ritter Layton. No, not even close. <laughs> I'm actually curious as to why he, he got ultimate price and why he thought that was better than just well, having either. That way, if, if Josh plays a face down creature to try to flip his Raptors, you can ultimate price it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is not why he got it. I, I assume he got it to deal with. Boon Seder, maybe it's a way to keep up a uh, protection from become men's team or battle raid or something. It's not. There's a hexproof creature literally in play, and also the Eidolon just trades with Boon Seder but draws him two cards next turn. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to speculate as to the potential reasonings behind. Uh, well, me you know, too. What I was doing. I wasn't just gonna make this up though, like some people here. <laughs> I was willing to say words and see what happened. <laughs> As you normally are, yeah. Yeah, I'm normally quite willing to do that. So Josh is going to pass because there's no reason to give up his hexproof value. Kino yeah. can play like he what? He can't a, do anything good. He can play a three-three Night Howler that triggers Strength of the Fallen, or he can play a Nick Sweeper. I guess he can play both if he wants. <laughs> that that seems pretty insane. What seems insane? Just playing like a Nick Sweeper and a Night Howler and attacking for like. I don't know, seven or something with this. No, you can't even really attack with the yeah. with the brain maggot because otherwise you're just going to end up getting. Tr well, I guess you trade it for the Strider. Yeah, you can trade it with Strider. So yeah, maybe that's fine. Play your two enchantments and attack. You don't really want to attack with Sadisi, probably. I don't know. Maybe you just cast Next Weaver this turn and leave up the ultimate. No, leaving the ultimate prices doesn't do anything with Connor for Strider right now, though. Yeah. Well, and if you cast Next Weaver, maybe you after soon. If you cast Nick's Weaver, maybe you can get back uh, I don't know, Blossoms. That card seems awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Just pay, pay nine mana to get it back. <laughs> yeah. To reset where you are. I, I, I just don't think Raptor's losing this game. Somehow. Yeah, I mean, his deck is completely incapable of winning, but I think he's going to win. So, so do you see you can clock for seven here, I guess? Okay. Maybe There's about 10? to be so many raptors. But also, yeah, you can just chump with Elvish Mystic if you really need to. If CDC attacks for 10, it seems like chumping with Elvish Mystic is fine. You can still flip your raptor next turn. Well, if, if he taps out in green, he really can't attack. Or taps out in black, I'm sorry. Like, if he plays the Night Howler now, he really can't attack with Sidisi because he's already seen Den Protectors and Teamer Chargers, which will just bring raptors back into play and eat the Sidisi. Yeah. That's a pretty terrible spot. And then you're just facing down the... You know, this nine power well, strider. You saw the car the commune into Death Mist Raptor. So you can probably assume that's a Death Mist Raptor. Like yeah. I think that yes, I Raptor could have played not, you just die. He could have played his last card as a different morph, but I, I would assume it's a Death Mist Raptor. I think that's fine. Is Kino just gonna go aggressive and just hit with both? <laughs> so that's actually not terrible. Well, you can't wait around because yeah. there's just going to be a million raptors next turn, plus raptor himself. Yeah, and with a raptor commanding all the raptors. <laughs> this is raptor's commander deck and his standard super league deck. Yeah, it's like the the Jurassic Park preview where Chris Pratt is training all the raptors, <laughs> except just raptor training all the raptors. Sure, if you say so. I miss being able to draft dinosaurs so we could sing the Jurassic Park theme song every draft. That was one of the advantages of drafting Mirrodin Block. <laughs> so Raptor chose to trade for Sidisi here, it looks like. I guess with the backup Strider in hand, you're not really that uh, 
that, that, that worried about, about anything. There's about yeah. to be three raptors in play. Yeah. Maybe four if I've missed another one going to the graveyard. Like at I this think point, it was just the three. Up. Oh, jeez. And then that is going to kind of make it so even Kino's like second wave is not going to be good enough. Because now Raptor can just smash for eight and get back two Death Mist Raptors. He's not. I guess he maybe has to worry about ultimate price plus uh, two enchantments. That, that that doesn't even kill him because he's got. I mean, if Nick Sweeper is just not. I guess if Nick Sweeper mills two creatures and then he has ultimate price plus two enchantments, no, that's still, I don't think, enough. Raptor broke it. Yeah. Unless he faces down any real deck, I don't see Raptor losing. If he plays any deck with, with playable cards, though, I, I think he's probably done. So it looks like Raptor is going to choose to have an extra creature in playoff playing Den Protector, which makes sense. Kino milled one creature. Ooh. This deck is very reminiscent of a, of a heroic deck, which heroic is also not a playable deck, but <laughs> I think it does a little bit more than Conifer Striders in ways. Well, the Death Mist Raptor is like the backup plan. is working out pretty well here. Raptor is winning based on just the power level of that card. So that seems like a, it's, it's it, a pretty decent call. Kind of, kind of already doesn't do much, and it certainly doesn't do much fast. And losing that Eidolon to get an ultimate price that he still hasn't cast, which has cost him multiple cards, uh, you know, it, it's not working out great. Yeah, that, that I think was... Cuneo was like ahead on the board before that, but I think that ended up made him do nothing for too many turns, and that is going to let Josh, you know, kind of take advantage of that by just getting back a bunch of Deathmiss Raptors with his Den Protector and kind of going off. <laughs> Raptors full of, uh, full of communes and boon satyrs, though. He has drawn pretty well. Yeah. And has also milled pretty well. So, I guess Raptor's just kind of on the plan now of maybe just hitting with Raptors and then just trying to grind Cuneo out by just doing that over and over again. That seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, I mean, Cuneo hasn't shown any way to actually be able to stop that plan, so... Yeah, he's not... Cuneo's not adding enough pressure to the board to really stop Raptor from getting just tons of advantage here. Commune, let's see if we can hit some more raptors. <laughs> he hits multiple raptors. I'm going to have a problem. Although there's no chance raptor could have traded for five raptors that quickly. Yeah, it's true. Hitting another den protector, though. Den protector, get back commune, commune into den protector. I think you've demonstrated a loop at this point. Yeah, that is the full combo. Though I'm curious why raptor communed pre-combat he's not he's now unable to boon satyr if that matters i guess against ultimate price you're not really looking to do that anyway well i mean he doesn't know about ultimate price but that's true he doesn't he's probably very confused as to what kenya did tutor for actually <laughs> <laughs> he has not played a card better than i don't know blossoms yet well you've seen his deck list he it was our lock that he was not going to play a card better than i don't know yeah How many enchantment creatures does Kino have in his graveyard right now? It looks like f one, two, three, four, five. Actually, if Kino can trigger enough Strength of the Fallens, then uh, Den Protector could be lethal. Yeah. And he, he does get to get back an enchantment, so Kino actually might have a shot here. Yeah. I mean, he's going to get to get back Idol on the Blossoms, which does make the Strength a little bit less strong. Right. But... Actually, yeah, no, it doesn't actually change it because the next waiver will just replace it. So it'll be the exact same. So he just needs to draw one enchantment. Is that right? Yeah. Well, next waiver is also, I mean, it depends on, yeah, what he does in a turn here. He's done protecting back one. Oh, yeah, he just gets to play the idol on. Or getting Sadisi. 
Well, he milled. It looks like he milled two creatures. Does that matter? Doesn't he have to play two either way? Yeah, I, I assume so. It's possible, actually, he wanted to ultimate price his own... No, he, it actually doesn't work. I'm trying to figure out a way to, to get Night Howler into the graveyard. Or just finding a Night Howler is probably enough, right? Yeah. Oh, there's another Night Howler, yeah. Yeah, that's what Sadisi does. Yeah. The full combo deck. All right, looks like Cuneo went off here. <laughs> this is like Luis Scott Vargas or Steve Menendi and stuff. You just never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was completely wrong about how that game was going to play out. Forgot yeah. to just go crazy combo kill with his broken deck. It looks like a looks like Paul is going to make it to round two here. He's uh, got Pelucranos, Ugin, and Genesis Hydra against Kibler's green white deck with Kibler having no permanence in play. <laughs> wow, so. do you think that Paul chose a deck that was going to be good against green, figuring oh. that there's almost a fifty percent chance that Kibler would play that? <laughs> Almost a fifty percent. <laughs> Plus or minus fifty percent. Yeah. But not minus. Yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely a disadvantage to to have everyone know that I'm playing this no matter what. I don't care how good life bane zombie is. Yeah, at least in vintage when I just play Force of Will every time, there's just so many good Force of Will decks that it's not a big deal. <laughs> Yeah, I told you that before our, our semifinal match. I'm like, I could just build three decks that are good against blue, but that doesn't exist. Like, you really can't do that much to exploit that. Where in standard, you can't actually go that far to, to exploit green decks because um, there are different varieties. There are more control and more mid range. And uh, yeah, Kibler will mix it up between a little bit faster mid range and mid range mid range. So, <laughs> yeah. You know exactly where he's going to fall on the spectrum, but. Yeah. So Raptor now having seen the full force and fury of Kineo's deck, I wonder how it's going to change his plays. Oh, wait, Raptor's playing a deck that can't change the way it plays pretty much anyway. I mean, Rabble Master and Xenoghost are really not what you want against a deck full of just Seder Wayfinders and Sadisis and, and stuff like that. So. All right, looks like we've got to get game three here. I wouldn't mind seeing another Team or Battle Rage combo yeah. kill. That, that's pretty sweet. Doggy. Looks like Raptor's down to three cards. But well, probably seven. Looks like six. But it's kind of like the perfect six, I assume. <laughs> so we've got Paul onto the onto the round two, Jerry onto round two, Tom Ross, I believe, onto round two. So, just waiting to see the results of this match. How do you think Paul's matchup is against Shenanigans? I assume pretty good. Paul has cards like Ugin in his deck. <laughs> he just all plays... Right. Both decks can just play all their cards as morphs. Yeah. Raptor binned the wrong morph here. He, he's looking to bin more Raptors and then be in pretty good shape. But instead, now, oof. Yeah, like, the commune gets taken here, is my guess, leaving uh, Cuneo fairly far ahead here. Yeah, more than fairly. Brain Maggot uh, was really strong last game. Yeah, well, Brain Maggot's just awesome against Raptor. It's uh, a Thoughtseize that exiles that also gives you a 1-1 one, one and does a bunch of other stuff like <laughs> triggers enchantments it, you know counts for strength of the fallen if it ever dies can get sacked to CDC like can wear a Night Howler it's just the best card in Cuneo's deck in this matchup in probably all matchups well at least he can ramp out a turn 4 strider yeah <laughs> that's what that's called Forcer is going to be a problem. Yeah, so is Brain Maggot, also Night Howler and Cedar Wayfinder. <laughs> Ooh, Den Protector too, yeah. Hmm. 
Wayfinder floated. Wayf drawing the Den Protector and then, and then seeing Wayfinder just sitting there waiting to get max value. Well, Raptor still has not drawn any of his great cards. Yeah, he has so many, too. Hmm. On the other hand, if Raptor does just draw Become Immense followed by Team or Battle Rage, he could just win this game. He could, but that probably still won't be enough, is my guess. Yeah, Kitty is going to be at like above 20 and have a bunch of blockers to soak up at least some, some damage here. Okay. Kitty is just going to keep milling cards. It's basically what his deck does. Gets to know Elvis Mystic, that's pretty lucky. Fighting a white giant would be pretty insane. Yeah. Oh, that, that Wayfinder just wrecked. Yeah, he doesn't need lands though. No. But also having a land on top of his deck is a, is a double beat. Yeah. I think Raptor's best draw is just to draw a commune into a into a like a den protector milling three raptors. <laughs> no, milling yeah, four raptors. That's, that's his best draw of a six card combo. <laughs> what do you think about Temple of Abandon? Where's what? that on the list? What if it sets up his best draw? What? I don't think you can scry into six cards. Did Kunio actually mill anything he wants to den protect? Uh, Idol on a Blossoms, maybe? Yeah. But he, he really hated that card, as you saw last game, so... Well, he still gets to play den protector, and he has multiple Night Howler, so... <laughs> I think he's going to be winning pretty quickly. It looks like Raptor's got two turns. Yeah. Night Howler, den protector is a nice little combo. That's a new addition to the deck. Yeah, den I mean... It's not really a... What? How do you do that? I don't know. How big is it? <laughs> okay, 6-6, six, six, Seder Wayfinder. Interesting. I guess it's... Yeah, I think I would have been tempted two, to Den Protector it up. He's behind a 5-5, five, five, so... I think I would have just played the Den Protector there and ended the game in two turns, but... What if Raptor just keeps drawing Striders? That's something that can happen. <laughs> would Doomwake Giant be any good here? <laughs> it would be, like, pretty good. It's not like that good because it will kill Kunio's camera time and that Raptor will Oh, there we spot. go. <laughs> the father. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I kind of feel like Raptor should just snap concede. <laughs> I don't feel like he needs to snap concede, but he is dead. Yeah. I assume Kunio is just not even going to attack here. Yeah, you yeah, don't really want to trade. Well, it's completely yeah. fine, I guess, when you just have Night Howlers left behind, but. You could uh, play Dead Protector now to get back Commune with Nature to go off of Raptors. Mm -hmm. In the end, shenanigans are better than shenanigans. Yeah. All right, face down, den protector. I guess raptors best play here, and then again try to hit a miracle commune and kind of go off with more raptors. Yeah, I don't really know what Raptor's plan is here besides getting Doomwake Giant into Oblivion. <laughs> all right, looks like flying solo once again, but that's all right. We got a. This game's not going to last a whole lot longer, I suspect. <laughs> We've got a Doomwake Giant reducing Raptor's board to two one one morphs that only one of which can can flip here. <laughs>
and some pretty gigantic night howlers. Not everything is dead. So I assume, yeah, that looks like just about game. I mean, maybe not literally this turn, but still going to not, not last much longer. I think Grafter's got this. Yeah. I imagine, like, after he chump blocks twice... Oh, look, has no board. <laughs> after he chump blocks twice, maybe if he draws something really good, then he'll, he'll be in good shape. He can play Ugin this turn. All right. All right. So shenanigans. In the shenanigans versus shenanigans battle, sh battle shenanigans triumphed. And I, th I have to just want to. Yeah. So are we gonna get round two set up? We're gonna take a little break. What's going on here? Alrighty. Looks like we're gonna take a quick break here, and we'll be back with round two.